I am happy that you came here in so that you are so many. And uh, as the first, we wanted to introduce ourselves, but uh, we didn't get that uh, Martin will do it for us. So we will probably skip this. And just Denka will tell you a few words about Sobra Uceni. Um, good evening, I'm Zdenka, I'm from Svoboda Učení, as Martin said. I have two kids, 15-year-old uh, boy who's already at the, uh, uh, high school and nine-year-old girl who's homeschooled. Uh, since 2012, uh, I work for Svoboda Učení and Svoboda Učení is, in, as, is an NGO that uh, since 2012 spread the word about self-directed education and schooling and free and free schools yeah and we also provide support for families who want to unschool their children which is uh, illegal at the moment at Czech Republic and that's why uh, Svoboda Učení exists actually also because we work uh, on legislation changes as well. We also publish books and ebooks. we run website, we write articles and translate articles and videos. Uh, we got Two years ago, we got five million crowns, uh, a donation for the center of Svoboda Učení. And currently we're buying uh, um, an object <laughs> where uh, this center will be. Uh, okay. Uh, and so we're also part of an international uh, uh, movement uh, through Alliance of the self, for the Self-Directed self Education. So, uh, what do you want to tell you? I think that we all who came here quite see that we have one uh, problem. We are not as free as we want to be. And this is something that we can see on quite every hour step in this world. For example, the reason why the Congress is here, it's called financial freedom. Financial freedom, why? Because the governments are regulating one of our basic rights we have, and this is right to freely trade with each other. Government is regulating our businesses, it's regulated what we are selling, what we are buying, to who and under which condition. This is all what we can do as we want. This is everything somehow set by regulations. And that's not all. The government is ruling everything. It's over our properties and estates. When I want to build a house, I have to go to some government official and ask humbly, humbly for permission. Why? This is humiliating and this is not something what humans should do. As well as I have regulated what I can have there as my pets, what I can grow there as a flowers. I have regulated really quite everything. And uh, I, I, can, I can continue for quite infinite here, but I think it's, it's, it's good to sometimes say that, to sometimes, uh, to sometimes say what, what everything the government is, is limiting us. For example, when I want to travel somewhere, when I want to transport myself, I need a license because the government is telling me what, what, what vehicles I can, I can drive. When I want to have a gun for my self-defense, it's also regulated. I need a license as well as for the car. The guns are regulated because quite leftist doesn't like them, but the rightists aren't so much better. They doesn't like drugs, they are regulated as well. And this is coming to that the government is even telling me what substances I can accept into my body and which, substances I, which substances I cannot. Like, they are telling me that I don't own my own body. It's in medication. When I am ill, the government is saying how I should be treated. Who can do that? who is licensed to do that, and I have to just pay it and follow the regulations. This is what means that my, I am not owner of my own body. I, I am not the one who is deciding. And 
This is connected to that the government is even telling me since how old, how old I have to be to have sex. How old I have to be to watch other people to have sex on the internet. This is, the interesting thing about it is that the first thing I can do earlier than the second thing. And when I find my partner, the government is even telling me if I can marry the partner. Like even this is regulated by the state and we are having social discussions about who can marry partner of which sex. And then when the family is there and they are having kids, the government is telling how to raise them, how to educate them and everything. And back to the financial freedom, the government is violating it by telling us what currency we have to use, what currency we have to accept in our business, and in what currency we have to pay taxes. This is everything what the government is telling us. And the one way of workaround is to use some cryptocurrencies we all know and we are here for, and it's a great way. However, I want to ask, why is it like that? What's wrong? Everything what I said here is terribly wrong. Why? Well, it's just most people don't mind. We do. We are minority. The majority doesn't mind this. It's okay for them. And I can't even blame them. It's okay that they don't care because they have other hobbies and they have other ways where to spend their time. It's their business. And it's okay that they don't care about our freedom if they are happy with their lives. So even the silent majority is not a problem. It's not a problem if they are libertarians. <laughs> if they are, we can live our lives free, even if they don't care. But if they are not, they are just beating us in the elections and destroying our freedom. Well, why? Why are they statists? I, as I said, it would be okay if, if they would be libertarians and it's not a problem, but they are statists. Why? They were taught to be. And I see this as one of the biggest problems of this society. This society is raising kids to be statists. School is great machinery of state propaganda and indoctrination, which is put into our head since we are really young. Statism is the most dangerous religion because nobody even considers it as a religion. Everybody just doesn't see that they are thinking, okay, it's normal. At schools, there, is, there are subjects which are even, they, their, their meaning is to grow up good citizens. And this is what the schools are doing. And we don't even see that. Because it's normal. It's normal that at school there is a picture of a president in every class. It's normal that at school we are learning our anthem and how to act when the anthem is there and that we have to respect it. When we are really, really young. And then, how do we want the people to be somehow, I don't know, let's say, critical about the state. How then we can have some discussion about it? How can we can discuss about state when from the youngest age, everybody is just indoctrinated that the state is good? For example, when we are at history lesson, the history lesson is teaching us about wars. Everybody knows wars are bad. Nobody knows so much that wars are quite what states are doing. There is not so much free people society who are going and have some war. They are just some mighty people with power who are sending other people to wars. And this is something what when soldier kills somebody, he can be a hero. And if not a hero, it depends on which side of the conflict he was. 
if not a hero, at least we are pardoning it. Imagine a situation when a private person would kill somebody and his excuse would be, my boss told me to do so. Yeah, you're laughing. And it's absurd. But when soldier says, I killed that man because my general told me, suddenly it's okay. This is the result of indoctrination we are having at school. And back to the financial freedom. The school is teaching us that the state is solution at the subject where the market fails, so-called fails. Because they tell us that the market fails in, I don't know, Medicare, or that the market fails in social system, or providing firefighters, or whatever. These are just obvious lies. Because <laughs> not just 100 years ago, it was provided by free market. And in some countries, some of these services are still prov provided by free market. So when they say that free market can't do this, they're just lying. And I have here one picture as an example, another example of that indoctrination. Imagine that you are a really little kid who is learning alphabet, numbers, some colors here. And among these basic things, you learn that anarchy is bad and the democracy is great. Yeah, this is such a sad alphabet, numbers, colors, democracy is great, anarchy is bad. Here are the sad kids in anarchy and happy kids in democracy. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that's the proof. And when you have this for many years, like every day, yeah, then we can't wonder that the people are just like they are. And do you know what is the verse on it? It's compulsory. And compulsory is enthusiasm for that we are forced by violence to send our kids to school. And it's really like that. And it's another thing which would be absolutely mind-blowing if somebody private would do that. Like, you deny to send your kids to school and indoctrinate, then we will kidnap it. Yes, and I am saying kidnap. It might sound that it's overdone or too dramatical. <laughs> well, it's reality. And the sad thing about it is that even I can't feel it like that. I can see it. I know the arguments. I'm anarchist for many years. And still, when I would heard that somebody private would say, you will learn your kid my whatever religion, let's say, or I will kidnap it and teach it anyway. I would feel it probably much worse than I feel schools, even as anarchist, emotionally, and even if I know the rational arguments. And this is what's going on, and the schools are making it to sound normal. And this is happening in a cycles, which Denika will tell you something about. Yeah, actually the system is replicated itself. You are forced to pay for the indoctrination of your children because your parents were forced to pay for your indoctrination and your grandparents were forced to pay for the indoctrination of your parents. Because, etc. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, I will give my work to Zdenka again soon. I just want to tell you one more thing. That the direct indoctrination is not the only problem. There is also a very big problem with indirect indoctrination. What do I mean by that? What do you learn as the first thing when you are put to school as a kid? When I ask this question, many people answer, I learned to write, I learned to read, whatever. But the first thing you learn there is to obey imposed authority, the teacher. This is the first thing the school teaches you. Obey. Obey until you are good. Disobey until you are bad. You will be punished. And I am not saying that authorities are bad. 
I don't even like when people are saying such a sentence, phrase, I feel it sometimes as a pose. I have a problem with authorities. I don't have a problem with authorities. I am anarchist and I don't have problem with authorities. I don't have problems with authorities with I, which I choose. But this is not the case. This is the case that there is forced authority. That the kid just have to. You put their teacher and the kid must listen to him. And, well, this authority of a teacher can then be very easily replaced by another authority, like policeman, politician, or some government official, because we are just taught to. And many people think that the learning process can't work different. And Stenka will now tell you that maybe it can. You think maybe you think there is no other way, but there is actually. Um, you can think that there must be some imposed authority um, at school, like even at the private schools, because there has to be some authority, otherwise there would be a mess. Um, there also had to be an authority for a currency until cryptocurrencies came. So there are there are many ways how to how, how it can how it can function actually. Try to imagine a school where everything is voluntary. There are no compulsory lessons, sorry, no compulsory lessons, no, cla no uh, imposed authorities, no segregation, no testing, no evaluation, uh, no forced participation, or even no monitoring of absence. But with rich environment and with equality in decisions for children and adults. And it really works. There are some schools like that. Uh, in 1901, there, there was a school in Barcelona by, uh, established by Federico Ferrer, Escuela Moderna, today known as Anarchistic Free School. Uh, then in 1921, uh, A.S. Neal established Summerhill uh, that works until now. And in 1960s, there were uh, Sudbury School, Sudbury Valley Schools. Uh, it started in USA, and today there are many Sudbury Valley Schools all around the world. Is it a school for everyone? Probably not, because nothing is ever for everyone. We are different and everyone should be responsible for their own educa education, every family, every parent, every child. Why, however, should it be illegal to take back our responsibility? Okay, so what can be solution for this, for the state? We know that there are schools which can be actually better than current schools, where the pupils can be acted kindly and the teachers doesn't have to be such terrible authorities and still they are growing up as, as uh, good people they are getting worse and living their lives for many decades and there is not a problem with that but what it where is the problem the problem is that the state for example here in this country is forbidding it we can't have such school here in Czech Republic it's possible in some countries, but usually it's not, more or less forbidden. And the solution what to do with this all state and the indoctrination is to completely separate education from state. So what does it mean, in fact? What do we have to do when I say complete separation of an education from the state? At first, it means abolition of compulsory schooling. Now, it's what I was talking here before, when you don't put your kid to school, they can kidnap it from you. This is the first thing we must change. So the people who don't want to participate in this government system of indoctrination and education just don't. They can raise their kid as they want, put it to any school they want, 
or teach it at home, whatever. And any bureaucrat or state government <laughs> official has nothing to say to this, because it's just the thing of the kid and the parent. Then, that's not everything. There still can be some private schools, and they are terribly regulated by state. These regulations have to be abolished too. Why? Because now, when you say, here in Czech Republic, you are from many countries, so in many countries it works different, but uh, there is something similar. Sometimes you have just private school and you say, okay, this is private sector and it really is. But even this private school is absolutely regulated by government laws. So, even if, for example, in Finland you almost can't found private school, in Czech Republic you can very easily, you can have private schools here, but if you want such school as Denka was talking about, like the Sudbury or Summerhill, you just can't. It's not possible. And the free market, what was the point of the free market? The point of free market is that let the people to try to provide services, and those who are doing it good will profit, and those who are doing it bad will not profit, they will fail, and they can start something else. This is the point of the free market. However, if there is some form given by the state who just decides how the school must look, then you are not giving the people the freedom to try all the ways and let the best succeed. You still have quite government school. The only difference is that the monies are going to some private pocket. And that's not all. We also have to abolish government subsidies to schools. The government is giving money to school and this is bad at first because they first have to steal that money from us, but that's not everything. Um, when the government says, let's put money into school, he must define in its laws what, is, what the school is. Because otherwise everybody can say, I have a school here, my yard is school, so I want money for that. So in the moment when the government is giving financials to schools, there must be defined a school in a law, which is in general bad, because then they can be easily regulated. And also the problem is that uh, when you already paid for some service, like education of your kids, you very often don't have money to pay it second time, when you, even if you want to put the kids to private school. And the fourth is abolition of state education certificates. You know, degrees and all the exams and, and diplomas and this stuff. I have nothing against diplomas and, and degrees, but such a diploma doesn't have to be guaranteed from state. Or the state doesn't have to be the one who is deciding who can give diplomas to people. This can be done absolutely on free market. How? Everybody can say now, well, if we will do this, everybody can just found a school, find a school, create a new one, and say everybody can have a diploma. Yes, it's possible, but then such a diploma would be absolutely worthless. Because everybody knows that, that this is not good. And we can see this even from some mechanism we have, we have now. Like, now we have mechanisms, for example, that you have some workshops or courses or where, where you are just learning skills for your employers. And they actually care which workshop you visited and which diploma you have. And this is exactly what can be at schools. You don't have to have some general degree, which is for all the state the same. You can have just degree from some school. And the school has some reputation. And the more the school is selling the diplomas to everybody, the lower the reputation is. Which is motivation, which is making the school to just not do it. And you can say now they are doing that. And yes, there are some private schools who are just taking the money and giving diplomas for them. But why? Who gave the value to these diplomas? Of course, the government. Because the government is saying that when you are having 
degree or something, then you can get some more jobs or whatever, even in, for the government. And that's, of course, tempting for the people to sell them. But if they would be selling them on free market this way, it would be for nothing good because they would be absolutely worthless. And what to do instead? We don't have government school, so what can we have instead of it? Well, the free market. And free market education doesn't necessarily mean that it's commercial education. It doesn't have to be something profitable or something like that. There is many ways how to do that. There can be private schools. Those private schools can be for rich people, for big money. There can be also charities. But it's not everything. They can be also private profitable schools for very poor people. It's possible we can see it in many countries, for example, in India. And they are incredibly poor people. And actually, they are almost not sending their kids to government school. They are rather paying private education for, for the kids. And about this topic, here will be another presentation from James Tooley, which I absolutely recommend you to see, because I think it's fascinating. He was traveling over the Asia or Africa, and he can report how it actually is when there are poor people and private schooling. Because everybody here is saying, Without government, it would be terrible because no chance for poor at schooling. He's just showing, showing that it's not true. You can look to the countries, and the education is something what the people just value there. And they are able to pay it, even if they are really, really poor. Other way can be corporate schools. Again, something what we quite don't have in our current world. Why? Because now, again, there are everywhere public schools, so why some corporations would massively establish new schools. Yes, on the other hand, when there were no government schools, like many years ago, this was quite a common way that when you as a parent were working for somebody, this guy established school for your kids. You could send there your kids, and they were studying there. And this was good even for, the, even for the employer, it was good for you, it was good for the kids, and everything was okay. Another way is that the schools are, in fact, not needed. Many people think that education means schooling. It's just not true. Everybody is educating all the time. And you can educate your kids in your family. There is also many ways how to do that, like altering parents can do such a circles. For example, Zdenka is in one such uh, group that they are uh, switching the kids, like who, who is the day caring of them. And it's just working that you don't have to be some millionaire or, or whatever to, to do that. And you also can just educate yourself by some workshops, courses, lessons, which you can take anywhere. Or you can now, in the times of internet, educate yourself absolutely free. So, these are the ways. So, it's not true that we need government schools. We need government schools just for that indoctrination. But, what is the conclusion of all of this? The conclusion is that we can never be fully and really free as long as the government will decide what we learn, who learns that, and who teaches that, and how to do that. The government is forming the thinking of masses by this. And the education system is just a huge propaganda tool which the state is using against us all. So thank you for coming, and I would like you to, to think about it. So, thank you, Urza and Zdinka, for the presentation. I have to say, uh, when I heard uh, these arguments and your goals for the first time, 
I thought uh, they are absurd. So maybe uh, this is uh, the reaction of uh, ordinary man uh, who went through the schooling system that something is really impossible and absurd uh, or even evil. Uh, I would like to ask you for uh, how many of you uh, the separation of the state and educational system, abolishing uh, of the compulsory schooling is uh, looking like extreme measure or goal? One. That's not many. I hoped for uh, more. So, uh, I'm I think sorry, I will, I will talk to you. I just need to sit down. I wasn't sleeping so uh, much last night. Do you need a okay. uh, cha chair? No, 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 it's okay. I, I, I'm okay. Sugar. Yeah. So, but you are able to answer questions? Yeah, I'm able. Or? I'm able. Okay, sorry. okay. Just say if you need something else. <laughs> Don't, please. So, uh, what are your questions? No, no, it's okay. I, it's it's I really just, okay. No. I know Urza, and if he needs help, he will yeah. say so. I, I'm sorry, I just wasn't sleeping so yeah. much last days, and I have three yeah. presentations in this week. Okay. Uh, it's okay, I, I, I got sugar before. Uh, I, I know, actually, I have Red Bull. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, please have a question. Uh, okay, there is a question. Before uh, I will hand you mic, uh, I will ask uh, my question because for me it's always uh, a problem of uh, the transformation. Now we have some really bad state that people are not able to think for themselves and. Uh, uh, to act like entrepreneurs decide for themselves in free market and uh, what is your view how the transformation from very regulated uh, state like this is uh, going to be or uh, what is our view uh, of the transformation should we like abolish uh, all the laws at once or uh, how uh, uh, how this should develop? I will answer um, with a few words. There are actually the first step could be changing of compulsory school attendance to compulsory schooling, because there is a difference. There are two types of countries actually in Europe, and one of them uh, they have compulsory school attendance, that which means that the child is. Uh, has to uh, go somewhere in some particular place where learning is uh, taking place. Uh, and there are countries like Czech Republic, Poland, ex-communist countries actually. And there are also countries with compulsory schooling or compulsory education like UK, USA, France um, and some other countries. There are studies for that. You can Google it. Uh, and compulsory education is a wider, wider term. Uh, in countries like that, unschooling is uh, legal because uh, there are many ways how to educate your child. So this could be the first step to, f towards the, the change. I would say one very short thing to this. I think that the first and basic is that the state should leave us to be free and do it as we want, even if the state is taking our money and doing there something like government schooling. It's okay. At first, at least leave us to do it ourselves, even if we are paying the government. And then the next steps can be more freedom. Yeah, of course, the possibility of, uh, of the opt-out. Yeah, also it's a great talk, thank you. Uh, let me play a little bit of devil's advocate here. Um, so let's say this would happen, like it would all be abolished, nobody would have to go to any kind of official school or anything. Um, my worry is that just a certain portion of people would just do that, you know, stop sending people to school and after 20 years 
it's probably not a country I would want to live in, where, I don't know, 20% of the people would be uneducated and would just rob me on the street and just wouldn't be probably a nice place to live. So, in my view, the, I mean, the, the system as is is probably bad, but this situation probably would be worse, and the cost of failure is too high, maybe. So, what's your counter-argument to this? Yeah, I think that this is quite, uh, this is illusion. There is illusion that when we have no schools, the government will, when we have no government schools, we will die at streets and there will be not educated these people who can't even write or, or read or whatever. Well, there were times when there was no government schooling and the people weren't raping each other at streets. That's true that back then in the times they weren't so much able to read and write. But why? It's not because of the schools. It's because back then it just wasn't so necessary and so good skill to read and write because uh, you had to mainly work on field. For this you don't need so much writing and you were alive. However, now in our society it's different. You have here environment in which reading, writing and some basic, uh, I don't know, using computers and this stuff, it's incredibly good and, and incredibly... It, it's in fact, you are excluding yourself from society and from everything when you can't read and write. And for this, of course, I can say, it's just my claim, and you can say, no, it will be different because uh, the people just won't educate and they, they won't even learn, they won't even learn to write and read. But something like contra-argument to this is, look at the real freedom schools. Sudbury, Summerhill. They are really existing now in current world. They are kids which are just not forced to learn anything. They don't have to learn to read, learn to write. They, they, they just are free to do whatever they want. And still, these schools are not producing analphabets. These schools are producing kids who can read, write, work, and they are even more successful on government universities than the other people. And they are incredibly successful in their lives. They have higher incomes and you can see the statistic. Uh, Peter Gray made them very well. And uh, I think this is quite proving that it's not that the, we can read and write and then we have some education because we have to and because we are forced. Because you can see places when no, where nobody is forced and still they have that skills. They just achieve it themselves because they won't. As well as when the people, when, when you are young and you learn to walk or, or run or something, it's like you would say, if we would here have some government programs which are learning people to walk, then people would think, if it wouldn't be here, we couldn't walk. But it's quite visible that it's not like that because even there where the kids are not forced, they can read and write and they are educated. And also there are many children who uh, quite suffer in today's schools and who can decide what, which way is better. Those, those children who suffer now or those children who would not be educated as we think <coughs> uh, in another system. So. We don't know. We don't know because we didn't try. But that's not argument for not trying, I think. Um, this might be tied more to the US, but um, with the rising cost of higher education and college debt, I'm wondering if you think that regardless of people's political views, that the economics of just how expensive it is to get educated and with the availability of the internet are going to force people in countries to find more efficient ways like internet-based education and alternatives to having like a centralized university regardless of people's political views just because of the economics of it. Was it a question? <laughs> uh, okay, I'll try again. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, um, the question is, and I don't know how it is here, but with the rising cost of school in the U.S., do you think that the economics of where people just can't afford it, are gonna, or they can't pay back their debt, are going to force people to 
do alternatives like the internet for education and stuff like that, regardless of like political views, just because it's too expensive to send everyone to school? Well, uh, could you able to answer or? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, well, I don't know. If 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 you just raise raise the price of of higher education, then yes. Uh, lower people will do that, like by the government way. But of course, they have they have other ways. But there is one problem: the government is still giving the this, the official education some value by the diplomas, because you can still the society is set like that because the government is doing that. So you can, for example, study. Programming. Well, programming is not a good example because whatever, if you studied this, you, you can always do it for a living easily. But let's say some you, architecture. You, you would study architecture, and if you are doing it at government school, you can practice it then as your job. But if you would self study architecture on the internet or anywhere on some courses or whatever, then you just can't design houses because it's just forbidden. So it's true that it would work like on free market that when the government would raise the education, the people would go to somewhere else, uh, the price of education, the people would go somewhere else, for example, study it on the internet or something like that. But because of other regulation, it's not working 100%. I don't know for how many percent it is working, but in fact, it's not so much because you can have you, you can, there is many professions you just can't do without the government uh, permission. It's lawyers, it's doctors, it's architects, it's, it's incredibly many of professions where you just need the state paper. On the other hand, you have like programmers and everybody can do that. Okay, and another question? Oh, here. Thank you. Uh, you used Britain as an example of a country where just the education was compulsory rather than schools themselves. In such a system, how do I, uh, how do I prove that I'm providing education to my kids? Uh, is Summerhill and these schools, do they have licenses also? Do they need to obtain a license or not? Uh, in what country? In our country, if the... Uh, you said that the post-communist countries, in our countries, ah, this, yeah. uh, we have compulsory schools, but in the West, in some countries, you have just compulsory education, which is a broader yeah. term. So how do I prove that I'm providing the education to my I kids? I think this is more on Zenka. It's very different in each country. I'm not aware uh, perfectly about the laws in, in each country, but uh, uh, the the schools like Summerhill or Sudbury Valley schools, they uh, they are able to 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 <laughs> exist in such states, uh, and uh, there are some um, programs that there are some curriculums, but the schools are not forced to. Uh, to fulfill them, actually. So it's, but it's very different in in those countries. Maybe we can talk about it later because it's really complex uh, topic. Uh, yeah, and uh, I heard about it. That's uh, uh, even even the Summerhill in Great Britain is uh, fighting for the existence all the time. So it's not that easy. They get inspections and uh, they have to fight for themselves. Uh, so question was here. I have a question to Zdenka. So Zdenka, did, did I get it right that you actually educate your um, younger daughter at home? Yes, she's homeschooled because unschooling is illegal. Mm -hmm. so, so can you please share some um, principles and routines, so actually how you do that, so uh, how this education looks like? We live together. We just live. That's all. We don't have any uh, uh, any textbooks, any uh, lectures. We just live. She she asks me all the time. We talk. <laughs> um, it's the same as I live with my partner. We just influence each other. We love each other. Um, 
we go out together, we go to museums, to galleries, we go to conferences. For example, this, this morning I was, in a, in, I was at a conference uh, as a speaker, another one, and she was with me, so she, she watched me uh, working, and uh, we do a lot of things together. So that's how. <laughs> cool, and are there any topics that you like specifically focus on? Uh, well, she's. I think she she doesn't have any specific um, uh, topic that she's really interested in. Like she she loves animals, for example. So she knows a lot of things about animals. Um, she has a lot of time to uh, to read and uh, to find informations about animals because she does. She's not forced to to do uh, things that she doesn't like to do, and. Uh, that she doesn't feel that they have sense for her. So she knows a lot of things about animals, um, much more than I do. Uh, but for example, my son, my older son, he was really into dinosaurs when he was, uh, when he was little. And then he went to school and uh, gradually he lost his uh, enthusiasm, he lost his energy and uh, but I just noticed it too too late. And when he was at, in the fourth or fifth grade, I offered him uh, to to be homeschooled, and he didn't want to at that time because he had all all the friends he had he had in schools, and uh, he didn't want to school at the first place. But uh, then he just the, the system just sucked him in, and uh, he just. Um, you know, ob obey, obeyed, and he just. Thank you. That that's very interesting. And that for for parents that want, you know, to give um, their kids more kind of the home education. So, are there any resources that you would particularly recommend? You mean for homeschooling? Uh, I, I mean for like like it's it's compulsory in Czech Republic. So for additional education, you know, maybe some interesting books on how to effectively teach kids. Uh, and, and, and some educational resources for parents, how to be better parents. Well, just let your children live <laughs> and let your children be children. I don't, uh, we, you know, for me, uh, the voluntariness and the freedom of my children is the, the most important thing. So I don't want any methods how to teach them uh, what I want them to, to learn. I just want them to be happy and to to find out who they are and uh, to find their passions. I want to say one more yeah. thing to this. What's I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't watch the time and ah. uh, we have to close uh, uh, this is, uh, session. Uh, okay, thank it will you. be just very quick. Yeah, I okay, just want so to say to that guy who was, who was afraid of the kids without schools who are going on the streets and killing each other. I must say that Denika's daughter is very smart and, and <laughs> great and great kid who is not at school and still she is absolutely doing well. <laughs> yeah, and, but it should be said that uh, homeschooling or unschooling is not for yeah. everybody. So thank you Zdenka, thank you Urza, I hope you are okay thank you. and thank you for coming.